Delighted to be over on the Valve stand here at Therapy Expo. We're going to be just having a little demonstration of some of the dynamometers that are out, especially in light of dynamo bursting onto the scene on this market. Here are a few devices that we use in clinic. Hand grip, here's the microfet for as a push dynamometer, as well as the active force that we were involved in distributing a couple of years ago. However, they all have their limitations and that's why you end up with three of them. It's because really you kind of need to, to pull that and then Dynamo's come on the scene. And so here's Nick from Valde. He's gonna tell us a little bit about Dynamo as well as then putting it to the test and comparing and contrasting some of the tech that we already use. So thanks yeah. for joining us, Nick. No, pleasure. Thanks for having us along. So yeah, the Dynamo um, on site, as we can see here, the, the clear thing that gives us the advantage is where we can have compression, we can have the tension uh, and we can do range of motion as well. So it brings all of those technologies which may have been separate pieces previously and brings those together into one package with a range of different attachments that we have here to allow you to set up for a range of different tests. We'll be demonstrating as well what we then do with that and how that speaks to Val's pretty famous now hub and rightly so for how that data is actually then made more clinically applicable. These things are often given as a reading. It's quite interesting in Newtons, but what we're doing with that, and, and you're obviously having to then use your note system to then document that against the same patient. So really pleased to be able to bring that together and we'll demonstrate in the end what that means for that data on the patient level. Right, knee extension, sort of mid-range knee extension for the quads. Great clinical test, manual muscle test. You might want to use a push dynamometer to try and get that, but it's massively compromised, as you can imagine. You end up clinically in a situation like this, where you're, you're bringing it into there, into lower shin. Sometimes I'll even bring it up here to try and stabilize. But fundamentally, if you start to resist me there, Farouk, okay, at this point, we get into a point where really, he's having to hold back to not move me out. No matter how much I optimize, that is very much a compromised test for him to overpower me. What you ideally would have is a pull dynamometer, but then we're talking about getting another, what, get a crane gauge or something like that. So I'm adding another, what, fourth, fifth device to this armory until, of course, we've, our dynamometer in, in Dynamo can actually involve and incorporate that under the same device, feeding to the same data hub. So yeah, we're set up here for a knee extension test. So what I've done, I've put the Dynamo uh, with the tension links. So you can see that I've attached it under the bed there. We could attach it under massage bed. We could do a squat rack or anything fixed object. What this is going to allow us to do is really increase the reliability of the data that we get. It also allows me to step back and watch the test happening. So I really like that, that I will be able to see the data come through on the iPad, but I can see what you're doing. Are you making some compensations to the action to make sure we're getting the data that we want to collect? So I've set up the, the iPad. We can then use this for biofeedback as well. So you can see the data coming through live as we then go through the testing. We've set up the angle we want as we then do our extension, pushing through we can see the data come through live. We'll do relax there, come back again. We'll try and beat that score. We can see the score we had previously. You're gonna go and beat that score. Off we go. Push, 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 push. And relax there. Amazing. All of that data there will be uploaded. We can see how you're progressing over time and look at more in depth on the hub shortly. And we could, even if you were setting something up as a, a classic part of your clinic, gym or clinic room, you could even tether one of these to the wall, couldn't you? Absolutely, imagine, yeah? yeah. Wall bars work really well as well for upper body testing. Um, what's really nice as well, because we can set this, we can look at different angles. We could do inner range, outer range, obviously mid range here, allows us to have that flexibility. So abduction in sideline, again, not the same patient, but a classic test of which you might want to do. Now, when it comes to upper limb, uh, we have got a device in the active force that then does give you more than just a Newton reading. It can give you a force curve. Um, and it's, it's something that really at a, at a shoulder, I would want something a bit more than that because the initiation of movement, we kind of bothered about their ability to sustain it. It's, it's a relevantly different test and a push dynamometer is appropriate for it. But in this position, we're trying to at least make sure we're fixed and standardized. That's the main thing really for when we're doing retests. And so in this instance, I'm not, having to, I'm not going to be as overpowered, at least I hope not, uh, by Farouk on this test compared to the other one. So I don't necessarily need to optimize my position as much, but I want you to initiate some force there, Farouk, push against me and stabilize that and hold for a few seconds and back down. And that would then tell me on the app, not just the reading, but also then you would get at least a force curve and that would be a relevant test for it. But push down a monitor, you couldn't use a pull attachment, but of course, if you then attach the, the other pads to the valve dynamo, then it can be, as we've just done the same test, but it will tell us more information, which we'll see later. So we're here set up for a compression test. So very much the same as we just did. We'll jump into that same position and then we're ready to go. Three, two, one, push, 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 and relax. Good. We'll do another rep to get back to that start position. Ready? Three, two, one, off you go. Push, 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 push. 
and relax there. Amazing. So what we'll do, we'll upload that data. Um, so we see the, the maximum force, the peak force we hit. We'll also see the average of those reps that we completed as well. And then when we're on the, the hub uh, in a second, we can then see things like rate of force development as well to look in a bit more detail. So a super affordable device, but very simple uh, hand grip dynamometer. Really useful for a variety of things, namely, some sometimes surprising data coming through on that public health where it's really quite a good indicator for all cause mortality and therefore it's useful to have that in clinic and something that you might be even wanting to routinely do as a test however again that data is just there what scribbled into notes not aggregating properly you're having to compare and contrast over the course of many months if you might maybe maybe making trying to make a change with an elderly patient for example of which you then really not wanting to test that on a weekly basis we're not even doing it for say an upper limb problem but you may want to try and understand how they might have improved in that, in that direction or even putting that as part of a baseline test. You definitely want to be having that feed into the same system that you test in any other dynamometry metrics. So on this one, pretty straightforward. Give it a squeeze fruit for me, all right? Hard as you can, hard as you can, and rest. Obviously what I'd have to do then, of course, is reset. I would sometimes have to then tinker with this to put in uh, sex and, and age having to squeeze again and having to reset for reps, okay? So it works, but again, it doesn't talk to anything else. Okay, the next test we're going to do is the grip strength as well. So you see that I put the dynamo into the cradle here, the part of the accessory pack with the dynamo. Uh, I've then selected the, the test actually on the app so we can see an integrated video uh, if we want to see the test in progress. And we have written out here the instructions of how we're going to conduct this test. So by the same fashion, We'll take that in your hand. If you just keep off the pressure on it, so just hold it there for a second. I will start the test. We'll be ready to go. Okay, and squeeze. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. squeeze. Relax, excellent. So we've got one rep there, which we can see coming through. We'll do another rep. Okay, three, two, one, off you go. And squeeze, go, 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 go. And relax there. Again, when we finish the test, we'll get a review, we'll be able to see the scores that we achieved, either peak or mean, and then we can also see a change from the last time we tested, here below where we see the green, and we've seen an improvement over the time, and then again, we'll upload that and can look in more detail shortly. So one of the challenges we've described of using multiple devices, even in tests like this sideline side abduction, where you wouldn't necessarily have that much of a difference in having a dynamo device, it's what data you can derive from that and how it then correlates with the other work you've done with that patient, including what they did last time. So tell us a little bit about Valdhub then, Nick. Yeah, so on Valdhub here, what I've done is just gone to that individual patient's profile. So we've used a, a test one profile there to collect this data. And what we can then see on this overview screen are the most recent tests we've completed. So we can see the three that we've just done now are there. And then we have some of the data from our other products as well. And what we can see is that the score that we achieved on those tests just there. And what we then get an idea of well, as well is that longitudinal data. So what we can see is then in this case, which is great, we can see those improvements over time. And we can see here we've got a 22.3% increase there. But we get a, an idea of how they have progressed through that whole period that we've been working with them. So this could be over the course of a week, a month, or many, many years. We can then see how we are trending. So we can see here for the, the hand grip strength, if I just zoom in on that a little more, that's when I can jump in to a bit more data and go a bit more in depth. Where we can see I've got four tests over that time, and we can see here the max force, and then we can progress through to the different metrics in the system. So we might want to look at average force across those reps. We can look at impulse, so force over time. We have the average impulse as well. And then we're looking at RFD, so rate of force development. So yes, we want to be able to generate a lot of force and how quickly can we generate that as well. So Vold Hub allows us to take those maximum measures that we perhaps get on other devices and then really zoom in and dig into that in a bit more detail. Now we know that then correlating that with other clinical tests that you might have done, 
it's, it's sometimes really useful, sometimes it's unnecessary, but the fact that you've got that opportunity to see that over time as well as then against other clinical tests or other body parts under that person is really valuable. One of the things that really we want to be trying to move towards is integrating this data into our clinical reasoning rather than a replacement. I've mentioned before about being impressed with Valve for stopping short of then having some sort of red, amber, green, good, bad, ugly. It's not making any implications on this. It's not here to replace our clinical reasoning. It's something that we can integrate sensibly and then offer that solution for patients to recognize that we just stopped guessing, we've started measuring, and then we're also able to then see that through to the future on further integrated technology software updates that mean that we're not having to constantly replace things and update it. That's being done for us again by Valve under their systems. Do check out the new Dynamo. We've been really impressed with it. It's certainly, uh, I'm not going to be dropping my various dynamometers on the floor as I trundle around this place any longer because this thing is a really impressive piece of kit. So do click the links attached to this, have a little look, and definitely the guys at Valve are really forthcoming in chatting about all your needs.